Install the supplied four foot cleat to the surface on top of the ice and water shield layer. Attach with pan headed screws or flat roofing nails a minimum of 18 inches on center. Install 6 inch or 12 inch strip of ice and water shield over the install cleat to ensure proper protection. Ensure that the protective layer is properly attached to the upper protective layer with minimal wrinkles or gaps. Hook the lower open hem with the install cleat and rotate properly until the base is resting on the roofing deck. Once the base is firmly on the roof, attach lower base with pan headed screws or flat headed nails between two inches and three inches from the back of the base to ensure that penetration are protected once the cover is installed. Seal all penetration. Remove any protective plastic from the panel prior to the next step. Set the extrusion into the corresponding channel. Leave adequate space between the end of the extrusion and any end caps or end walls for the heating cable to pass through to the next chamber or to bend around to start the second pass of cable into the extrusion. Insert heating cable in extrusion channels. Inspect the extrusions and make sure that all edges are free of rough cuts or metal cutting burrs. Any obstruction that can cause harm to the tubing or the jacket of the cable can cause damage to the working capability of the system. In this clip, we are showing how to mark out a valley cut while attaching the top cover. Use the measure and fold method to approach any rake ends, end walls, or where the SFP eave system will terminate. Measure the depth of the extrusion and proceed to leave sufficient material on the cover to fold down in order to cover the height difference in the panel to the roof deck. In a standard installation, ensure proper water protection from the roof by using valley metal. Counter flashing, step flashing, sealant, or any other common roofing material to properly funnel the water away from the exposed roof deck. Attach the cover by hooking the back open hem into the base slip, pulling towards the front of the eave panel. Once there is a proper continuous connection made, push downward on the top edge of the cover to snap the cover over the base panel. Attach the final fasteners through the top cover and remove any protective plastic that may be on the SPF system. At any finished edge that may have heat cable or hydronic tubing, Mark an opening in the previously folded metal and remove sufficient material to allow for no contact of heat element. Similar to the top cover installation, the expansion joint should properly span the space between the covers. Use a proper roofing sealant to hold the expansion joint to the surface of the SPF cover with no fasteners needed. After the system is complete, we suggest installing a second layer of ice and water shield over the top section of the SFP eave system where the roofing material will properly cover the barrier. 
Do not install the barrier below the first bend in the top cover. Once all exposed areas are covered, finish the roof with the chosen roofing material.